Hey, witches. Hi, hello. Welcome back to another episode. Today is a history lesson. History. So our history lessons are going to start taking a witchier turn, like they didn't already, kind of. Um, but specifically witch trials. So if you have something against feminism, I suggest that you skip this episode and find a different fucking podcast to listen to. Um, so I, there's this local bookstore, um, it's a used, well, used and new bookstore, but like, it's called Second Flight Books, um, and I went there one day, and they had this book, it's called Witchcraft, A History and 13 Trials by Marion Gibson, um, and it has multiple witch trials throughout history, um, but some of the newer ones are um oh like the one from 2024 yeah the one planning for 2025 no before that <laughs> um the one from 2023 the last one in here the last <laughs> trial in this book is the trial of stormy daniels oh so yes <laughs> basically yeah. Um, so it, yeah. this book, as we go through this, is going to talk about the evolution of witchcraft because really from the very beginning, were they burning witches or were they burning women? Because bada bing, bada boom, but babe, they were burning witches. I mean, women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So like they, I mean, yes, there were some men that were um, taken in some of these witch trials. But for the most part, the convicted and killed were women. Which eventually we'll get to Salem. I don't believe Salem is in this book. Like the Salem witch trials for people that are not from the United States. Um, which it's a big thing here. But I don't think that those are even in here. I have a whole other book about those trials. Um. But these, this, this first one um, starts in the 1480s. Um, this book is very well written. Like, it's written like a story. Um, oh, that's nice. But it's like historical facts. So, um, like, the very first sentence is, In Innsbruck, Austria, stands a house with golden tiles that sparkle in the crisp alpine sunshine. Um you could so read like this to your children, right? It, no, don't read it to your children, <laughs> <laughs> because the the guy who wrote the Maleficarium or whatever is makes an appearance in here. Um, oh, that's that's traumatizing. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah. Um, so this is in Innsbruck, Austria, um, in the 1480s. This golden roofed house belongs to the Archduke Sigismund and his wife, Catherine. Um, My name is Catherine of Aragon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he is um, like, he's a Catholic prince, basically. So I don't know. He's Catholic, basically, is the, the big thing about him. And he's in charge. He's the political leader of this area, not the religious leader of this area. Um, I mean, not one and the same, though, when it, like, back in I that mean, time, I feel like it's the same. Kind of. There's, the Archduke is involved, and then there's also a bishop involved um, <clears throat> from this area. And then there's a fucking psycho involved, who is a um, monk. Not but the same. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole other part of it the bishop the archduke and the bishop end up being good guys in the end um, ah, that's and there are actually different. in this specific witch trial no one is killed so just that's this refreshing one, yeah it's it was a good one to start off on it's a little bit lighter um but it kind of lays the groundwork for future witch trials um so on October 29th, 1485, is when the actual trial happened. Seven 
suspects were brought to trial. Um, Helena Schuberin, Barbara, Sch these are Dutch names, so I'm sorry. Barbara Schlocken, Barbara Hufison, Agnes Schneiderin, Barbara Flechenen, Rosina Hockwarten, Barbara Hockwarten, um, who was Rosina's mother. Um, these were all women, and they were all already in prison for several weeks by the time the trial actually happened. Now, the Inquisitor here, which had like an extra ominous tone to it as I was reading it, because, you know, the Inquisitor is from Mistborn, so I was like, oh, um, anyway, the Inquisitor here is Heinrich, where does his name go, Heinrich Grew. I just put my notebook down and lost my page. Heinrich Kramer. He is the monk. Um, and he had a fucked up childhood. So like kind of, it's not okay, but it makes sense where he went here. Um, he has a very negative relationship with women in his mind, but inquisitors at the time, were the top Catholic officials who investigated heresies, um, which are beliefs that go against church, I don't know, word, church, I don't know, church teachings, preach, preachings, I don't know. It goes against the church. Um, so at the time, because this is the 15th century, um, some people in the church were specifically men, obviously, those are the only people in the church um, that actually get to make decisions, are starting to think that witchcraft is heresy um, and that witchcraft, this is where witchcraft gets equated to devil worship. Um, and that's why I say it's one of the things that like lays the groundwork for later witch trials. Um, so Heinrich Kramer is one of these, and this is such a wild way of saying this, but at the time, this is the case. He was a new generation thinker um, because the new generation thinkers in the church were the ones that thought that witchcraft was demonology. Um, and so he wanted to persecute these people. Um, he really kind of starts to get like an obsession with witchcraft and like punishing the women that are practicing it. Um, it it's, it's interesting. The, this guy's got an interesting, interesting um, life, but like he didn't have the best childhood. He went to become a monk to like, kind of find a better life. Um, but monks are celibate. So he didn't know a lot about women or have a lot of experience with women. He was a monk early in life. So like he just wasn't around them very often. So in his head, because he grew up in the church and this is the Catholic church. When I say in the Catholic church, I mean the Catholic church in the 1400s don't come for me, progressive Catholics. Like in the 1400s, women were, I mean, they talked about Eve and how she was like this seductive, evil sorcerer or temptress. And like, that's what he saw women as like untrustworthy. They were trying to seduce you and they were going to use sex to get what they wanted and um, all of this. When in reality, if you think about like history and the, what the women of that time were probably like, that's not it. They were, for the most part, fairly, um, like, modest and stuff. But um, he also thought, because remember, he's, like, coming up with a whole new psychosis here. He basically is the father of demonology. And because he's done so much research on witchcraft and demons and all of this, since the devil is male witches have sex with him as part of their satanic deal. So that's how they sell their soul to the devil is to have sex with him. Dope. So, yeah. I'm glad I agreed to that. Yeah, totally. Um, 
So he, he's just, he's, he's something. He's that character in all the movies that's just like super extra. And you're like, can't wait for him to just get ran over by a cart or something at the end of this, of the movie. Marriage? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, just, mm. um, so about a year before this witch trial, he had perfected his witch hunting method. So he arrives in Innsbruck in 1484. I said 1984. <laughs> 1484. <laughs> um, with a letter from the local overlord, which was Archduke Sigismund. Sigismund. Um, he has the right to come there to do his witch hunt or whatever. Um, he worked with the local authorities um, and had the right to do all of these things he did. Um, and in the town before it was Ravensburg, he actually um, tortured and to torture two women to the point that they confessed. Um, and these, those two women were killed. Um, he said that they did all these things and they like confessed to it. So they had killed horses, caused storms, worshiped the devil. Um, they had had sex with the, with devils to make a, a man's penis disappear. They, like he, he came up with all these crazy ideas and then tortured them until they were like, yeah, we did that. So they would stop torturing them um, because he thought in his mind, all women are witches and hate men and want to castrate them like fucking psycho. I mean, true, but. And those two women's names were Anna of Mindelheim and Agnes Baderin, and they were both burned alive. Um, so then he goes to the Archduke and was like, look, I was such a success. I did such a good job. Um, and he went to the Pope and was like, look, I did such a good job. Look what I did. And the Pope gave him a like, de decree or something, some kind of thing authorizing his demonological work um, and basically telling the archduke hey if you want to stay a friend of the church you're going to agree with this guy and let him do what he needs to do um so sigmund was like okay but like I'm, I'm i'm not okay with witches being here but also like you're not going to come into my city and fuck up the economy by killing people yeah. So, like, let's just, like, that's exactly what you're doing. Right. Like, that's what you're coming to do. So, like, let's not do that. Um, the local bishop, um, uh, his name was George Golser, also um, wasn't particularly happy about Heinrich and his madness. Um, but he was not, at the time, he didn't know. All he knew of Heinrich was, like, papers he had written for the church and, like, sermons he had given. And he had, this was before he had gone witch crazy. Um, and so he was like, okay, like, I'm going to keep an eye on you, but do your thing. Um, but there was one person in this air in this, um, town who was you know nobody really expected to come out and um be like what the fuck bro because she was a woman and she should just sit down and shut up and you know go in the kitchen um make babies but she didn't just rendering. sit down and shut up so she became the first one that heinrich decided to investigate as a witch and her name was helena schuberin um she had lived in this town her whole life. Eight years before this, um, she had got married to a respected merchant named Sebastian Schuber. 
So her name is Shubarin because apparently in Austria or in this culture, um, they put the N on like the I N on the end of a name to indicate that they're female. Like, um, so his name is Schuber, hers is Schuberin. Um, so they got married and they were both like, this was like a, a good match. Everybody was happy about it. Um, at the time though, that they were like courting, um, she had another admirer who, um, was also would have been a suitable match. Wasn't the best, wasn't as good of a match, but would have been suitable. But she would, she was like, nah, I'm not, not really feeling it. Um, so she ended up marrying this other guy. Well, that, that person, um, happened to be the Archduke's cook, like the, the manager of his kitchen. Um, he and his wife went to Heinrich Kramer when he started investigating her and accused her of all kinds of mad, mad things. Um, anonymously, by the way, because, you know, they weren't required to give their names to, <laughs> to give accusations. Um, apparently, the day of their the cook and his new wife's re wedding reception, Helena told the bride, you shall not have many good and healthy days here. Um and so they said the, the bride went to Heinrich and was like, um, she cursed me and I've only had one healthy month since my wedding seven years earlier. Okay, bitch. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> um, her neighbors, because, you know, once a witch hunt starts, everybody starts piling on. They oh, all yeah. They're like, oh, this is easy. Let's do it. Yeah. So um, they started reporting that she had an intimate, an intimate friendship. And in saying that they didn't mean sexual, they just meant they were really good friends um, with Yorick Spice. And he wanted more, but Helena rejected his advances. Um, and he had been really upset about that, but like she was fucking married. So what was she supposed to do? Um, and then he suddenly died in the spring of 1485. I'm sure everybody was like, yeah, so somehow that's her fault, too. Um, his brother, Jorg's brother, Hans, um, said that the day that he died, he had eaten lunch or something with Helena. Um, and supposedly said, the reason that I'm dying is that that woman killed me. Okay. Um uh, no, it's because there's no health care in your time. Right. Like, this, this is your the 1400s. Time. Like, hello. <laughs> um, but I just, I can't even. They thought that this was going to be easy, I think. Like, taking her down. But she's good looking. She's rich. She has a strong personality. She's got a wealthy, well-respected husband. Um, she knew this witch hunt was wrong. This is this is where she starts causing trouble for Heinrich because he comes to town saying, I'm on a witch hunt. He doesn't have any suspects yet, but he's like, I'm on a witch hunt. And she's like, I'm here. No, this is wrong. I'm not going to pretend like it's not wrong. It's wrong. Like, what are you doing? Um, and she hadn't been accused yet at this point, like when she's saying all of this. Um, but she's arguing with him as one does when you talk to an irritated, an irritating man who tries to mansplain everything and tell you that you're terrible. Um, she's irritated at him and she says that his views are dangerous nonsense. And supposedly she says, you lousy monk, I hope you get the falling sickness, meaning epilepsy. Um, but that's supposedly what she said. He never did get epilepsy. So like, meh, but they tried to say that she was cursing him. Um, yeah, okay. So he basically came in to this town, putting up his, you know, Pope papers on the door of all the churches, giving these sermons about all these crazy witches and 
um, tries to control the town. And now he is going to kill someone, like whoever, whoever the witch is. Um, so <laughs> there is someone else that gets accused of being a witch. We don't ever know. Like, I don't know who this person was. Um, it's one of the other women that I mentioned earlier, but they don't say which one. Um, so in one of his sermons, he's talking about um, a way that one of the villagers in this town found out who stole the milk from her cows. So he is quoting. They were milked. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> or they just didn't produce any. Right. Okay. So the the way that this person said that someone was stealing their cow's milk by witchcraft and to identify the milk thief, she would hang a jug of milk over her fire and smash it, saying she did it in the devil's name. The thief would come running, drawn by a magical connection to the milk as it hit the flames. So this bitch told Heinrich I use witchcraft to summon the witches. And Heinrich was like, sounds legit. And took that <laughs> as evidence. And Helena was like, bitch, what? That is the heresy that you say you're here to investigate. Like, I don't understand. So um, she was like, if, you know, if you're such a good clergyman, like, I thought it was that demonic to perform rituals in the devil's name. If, if you're not going to endorse this, why would you even mention it in your servant, your sermon? Um, and so like, he's pissed now she's pissed him off. Um, so he's, he's, he's coming for her, but to lay the groundwork for what kind of person Heinrich was, even his non demonology stuff, like his official business that he did was like, Mm. Um, so at this so time, <laughs> yeah, at this time or sketchy, just sketchy at this time yeah. is when, um, the reformers, which end up being the Protestants, um, are starting to come around. Um, and they're like, Heinrich is a shitty person because specifically one of his sources of income, which if we think of monks the way that we think of monks now, they don't have income. They just live by what the church provides. Yeah. But no, Heinrich was like rich, wearing gold crosses and shit. Um, one of his sources of income was selling indulgences. Let me tell you what indulgences are. Indulgences are documents that if when when the wealthy Christians or Catholics buy them, um, then they can present these documents when they die and they're going to get out of their afterlife punishments for their sins. So yeah, maybe they murdered that guy, but then they bought this indulgence. So now they're not going to go to hell. That's like confessing your sins to the priest. Yeah. Forgive He's me, father, for I have sinned. I murdered this person. God forgives you child. He loves everyone. Great. I can't wait for heaven. Right. Like, but this guy, um, was like, give me some money. Give me some money and I'll tell you you're not going to hell. Give me, give me some money. Okay. <laughs> That's them passing their little... Their little, 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 little yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, I can't even. So continuing through with this, like, this, this is who we're dealing with. Um, I'm going to come back to that part, but... Um... Not just Helena, but other Innsbruck women had, you know, they made their own decisions. They were strong uh, personalities. They also caught Heinrich's attention. Two of them were from the Judaic community of bankers and foreign traders agents. They had both converted. So they were Jewish, but they had both converted to Christianity. Um, Heresy. <laughs> to, they were um, not born into the religion. Right. Well, because at this time, like... So just to be absolutely clear, the Jewish people did not start being persecuted when Hitler came around. They were being persecuted way before that in the 1400s, to be specific. Um, so it was like not cool to be Jewish. 
Um, and they, cause they're being massacred then too in the 1420s, which is before this time, but not enough before that they're not still scared. Um, and they were like kicked out of their jobs and everything, unless they converted to Christianity. Um, So one of them was an Enel Noterin, who apparently did a heretical magical rite. And the other one was um, Elsa Bolmanin, who bewitched her own sister out of jealousy. Um, those her. two don't end up going to trial, though. Um, Rosina. <laughs> Rosina Hawkwarton, um Oh, I just broke this. Was <laughs> was connected um to the Archduke. So it was interesting that she was being accused and on trial. Um Barbara Barbara Hufison was um an herbalist, basically. Barbara Fleifkin was um went to the herbalist, so they both go to trial. Um, Agnes mm -hmm. Schneiderin cursed her lover, supposedly. Um, well, the others cheated. <laughs> two of the others were midwives, and one was a nurse. So basically, they were just women with professions. Um, or women with vendettas. <laughs> right? Like, what the fuck? Um. So by the time Heinrich finishes his investigation in Innsbruck, 63 people had been accused, only but only seven ended up being formally charged. 61 of the 63 people were women. Two men. One of those men was the husband of one of the women. So. He just, just wanted a divorce so he could go have another wife. He was probably just trying to protect his wife, and so they were like, witchcraft! <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, and when these, so these seven went to trial, right? And when they, during their hearings, all seven of them were like, no, I'm not a witch. Um, so now we're back to October 29th, which happened to be a Saturday. Heinrich and his clerks go to do the witch trial. He's going to be the judge, even though he's the accuser, um, of at least one of the women, but all of them. Um, he's also going to be the judge, even though he's already said that he believes she's guilty. Totally a fair trial. Oh, love that. Um, he, um, also made that, that target very clear because Helena Schuberin was the first one called into court on that day. Um, now, now remember back, I was talking about Bishop George Golser and how he was keeping an eye on Heinrich. Mm -hmm. He unfortunately was not able to come to the trial because he was ill, but he sent Christian Turner to um, observe for him because he was like, I just don't feel right about this. William Turner. <laughs> um, and Christian Turner will prove very important for these women. Um, so they call Helena in and they're like, put your hand on the Bible. You got to make this oath. And she's like, not fucking doing that. Um, and they were like, Same. okay, <laughs> but like you have to. So apparently re reformists, like the, the upcoming Protestants rejected oath taking that involved holy objects. Um, but finally they get, they come to an agreement and she swears by the four gospels to tell the I truth. Like that's, what is it? I feel like that's sacrilegious to like swear on the Bible. Well, they do it in all the courts here too. So, but that's because they don't read their own book, but that's a whole other conversation. A church and state. please. Um, so, so that she swore by the four gospels instead. Um, so then she's going to be questioned. And then if the court says that it's necessary, she's going to be tortured and condemned, condemned to death. Well, that's um, fun. Oh, even more fun. Her husband, Sebastian, not allowed to attend. He was not allowed in the courtroom. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so this already has like red flags going up in people's heads because he's like a well-respected member of this society. They're like, yeah. Um, but he wasn't allowed in. So then Heinrich like goes in for the attack and he starts asking her questions. Um, she said, he says, are you of a good way of life? Um, are you faithful to Sebastian? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and then finally he goes, were you a virgin at the time of your marriage? And everybody's like, <gasps> like clutching their pearls, you know? Um, <laughs> so this question was supposed to like shame her, but she refuses to answer. She's like, I'm not going to justify that with the fucking you. response. Um, and in the silence, like the shocked silence, because everybody's like, did he really just fucking ask her that? Like, what the fuck? Christian Turner is like, what the fuck does that have to do with this? Not shit Obviously is the answer. Um, so then they argue back and forth for a few minutes. And Christian finally goes, and this is part of this is a quote. Um, so the sex lives of Innsbruck's leading citizens were, quote, secret matters that hardly concern the case, unquote. Um, the notary recorded that Christian was therefore, quote, unwilling to take part in these matters because it was irrelevant, unquote, and asked Heinrich to move on. Um, Christian was the representative from the local church, so Heinrich was like, I guess, fine. Um, and then Christian's like, wait, hold on. So the way that these court proceedings are supposed to go, like this is part of our law, um, you're supposed to produce written articles or charges to be investigated by the court in advance of the hearing. Where are those? Well, they don't fucking exist because Heinrich was like, I didn't do that. So they suspend court for a couple of hours so he can write the articles. And they try to take Helena back to the cell. Well, they do take Helena back to the cells. But while she's there, <laughs> um, she talks to someone who she must have been speaking with previously. I almost feel like Christian was just trying to delay and like, um, what the word just went the fuck out of my head. Delay works, I guess. Stall. Yeah. Um, because when Helena comes back from her cell, she has Johan Merwert of Wemding with her. Um, he lives about 200 miles north of Innsbruck. He's a university trained specialist in church law. Nice. He Love comes that. in. Yeah. He comes in and it's basically they lawyered up. He comes in and explains he's going <laughs> to act in the capacity of legal representative for the said Helena Schubert and other women in detention. Um, so all of these women um, appoint him as their lawyer, basically. And where Christian had been like, ooh, ah, I don't know about this. Johan was like, yo, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> like, he was not playing around. Um, he is like, you're asking about hidden sins that has nothing to do. Um, you should be asking the women's questions about these articles that you um, were supposed to write. Which at this point, this is now 12 o'clock. They were supposed to recess until 11 o'clock. This is now 12 o'clock. He still has not produced these written articles or accusations. Um, and Johan's like, I, I reject you being the judge in this case. You're not impartial. You're not following the rules of the, of the court. I reject you being the judge here. Um, and then he's like, in fact, you're breaking the, the, the laws of the court and of this like municipality or whatever. So I think you should be arrested. Yes. Does, unfortunately, he doesn't get arrested. Oh. But oh. they're like, we're going to take a moment to reflect. So we're going to recess until Monday so we can decide. Um, and I'm going to talk to the Archduke to decide whether you are able to be the judge in this case. And Heinrich's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to wait. I'm going to give myself till Monday too, to to think about whether I should be the the judge since I represent the Pope and they're like what the fuck happened bro um two days later they reconvene now it's Monday because that was Saturday because apparently we do court on Saturday now it's Monday two days before Halloween it's October 29th um 
they moved the trial from the like town hall to this the house of a gentle gentleman named Conrad Gunther. Um and it's now a closed hearing. Um so Christian or Mo, Johann Merwert, the, the lawyer, is like the protocols were not in order. The proceedings were nullified by Heinrich's conduct of them. He was arresting suspects without written charges. Um, this trial was instituted in violation of the legal system. The women in detention on account of this are to be released. They're like arguing back and forth. Um, and this is what they decide that everybody's going to be released. The Archduke, um, who originally was like, okay, come on in, but don't fuck up my economy ends up paying all of the women's prison prison bills as well as Heinrich's expenses that he claimed for being in Innsbruck. Um, he didn't have to do that, but he did it to like expedite this process. And now um, he is, it is forcefully suggested that Heinrich should leave and go home. The witch trial is over. Um, they were trying to let Heinrich leave and save face, but he was because they made all of the women swear to Christian Turner that they would not flee from any further trial if they were to brought to trial again and that they would abide by church law unless they wanted to be brought back to trial. Um, they each had to provide signatures from male like relatives or male people who would vouch for them. Um, and all of this, all of this happens. Um, and he still won't fucking leave. Still won't fucking leave. Um, Bruh needs to go. Right. <laughs> he's he's uh, having issues. So all of this couldn't have happened without these male allies that, like, helped these women save themselves, basically. Um, but it all started because... Helena refused to answer that question. Um, and then they accepted the, the counsel from him. So um, all of this drama, that should have been the end of it all, right? Like that sh should have been the end. That, that trial was thrown out because it wasn't handled correctly. Um, and it was just all bullshit. Anyway, we're done with witch trials. Unfortunately, because of who Heinrich is as a human, he goes on to write Malleus Maleficarum, um, which is basically a manual for witch hunters in the future. Um, there are some quotes in here from it, I believe, and it's like disgusting. Um, but it lays the basis and the groundwork for future wish trials. Um, and he goes on. Okay, here we go. Oh, unlike godly men, witch women spend their time poisoning husbands and suitors, turning men into animals, having sex with devils and sacrificing babies. And this book is hundreds of pages long, <laughs> hundreds of pages long. Him just talking shit about women, basically. Um, and in this book, basically, links witchcraft to women this is the beginning of witchcraft being all about women and not being about anybody um he even in the book says something about um there's no need early on in a witch trial for the quote screeching and posturing of a courtroom or lawyers who were quote fussy about legal niceties and um, so he said, instead of giving them a trial, we just should straight up um, hang them up so their jo joints are cracked and their muscles are torn. Fuck a trial. And that should be enough to get them to confess. That torture there should be, should be enough. Um, so basically, <laughs> this book was like, witches are real. They're women. They're bad. And they should be killed. Um, and then even though he failed in this city, he continues on to conduct further inquisitions in Germany, Bohemia, and Moravia. 
he in 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 1486 which is about a year later um he is excited because an italian inquisitor condemned 41 women to be burned for witchcraft um and he's super excited about this and like proud of this but he he regrets that um the rest of the witches that should have been burned in that child or in that in that trial not child jesus christ um <laughs> took flight into the dominion of Sigismund, the Archduke of Austria, who was now a confirmed en enemy of Heinrich. Um, and that was true. Um, the Archduke of Austria did start sheltering witches um, after this, this trial. Um, he, and in, in Malia, Malleus, Malleus Maleficarum, I'm sure I'm saying that super terribly, but um, he does talk about this witch trial that failed. Um, and he's, he's not relating those stories to disgrace the Archduke, but to, to glorify him. Um, you know, he, he made no small efforts in the extermination of sorceresses. And with the assistance of the Reverend Bishop of Brixen, which would have been Bishop George, um, it was just, it was just so sad that they failed. What? That's not what happened. So basically his whole fucking book is just a bunch of lies on top of lies on top of lies. Um, so he's like, because of that failure, I wrote this book. So in the future, y'all will, be <laughs> yeah, will be better prepared, um, to conduct better witch trials. And unfortunately, he was correct. So that is the um, witch trial or the trial of Helena Schuberin from Innsbruck, Innsbruck, Austria. That's just. Yep. <laughs> Fucking wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. But. I'm sure it's only going like, to get better. <laughs> right? Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, because that one failed, right? Like, nobody in that particular trial, no one actually died. Yeah. But I don't think that is going to be the case for all of these. So. Yeah. He's like, I failed. Nah. I'm going to write a manual. Don't you worry. Yeah. I'm going to write down what I right. did wrong. So. So you, you don't... guys can tell everyone how to do yeah. it correctly. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting little book. Oh, goody. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> love history. It's so fun. I do too. It's interesting. I like it. All right. Well, until next time. Bye.